what do you actually value? When you know what's important, when you know what you value, when you know where you're going, it makes it easy for you to ignore what doesn't matter and focus on what does matter. I think we often look for answers when really it's the questions that teach us the most. I know that the right question at the right time can totally change the direction of your life. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've been writing about stoicism now for more than a decade and a half. I've talked to everyone from the NBA to the NFL, special forces to sitting senators. And we talk about how these ancient ideas, these philosophical practices can help us in the course of modern life. And today I wanted to give you 12 questions that I think about all the time derived from the Stoics and other wise people from the past that will help you, whoever you are, whatever you're doing in your life. Who are you spending time with? Goethe says, show me who you spend time with and I will tell you who you are, right? Seneca talks about spending time with people who make you a better person. My dad said to me as a kid, you become like your friends. Well, the question is, are you spending time with people who are averaging you towards where you wanna go or are they averaging you away from where you wanna go? This is a question that can lead to some hard decisions, people that you're gonna spend less time with. Who are you seeing after work? Who are you reading? Who are you talking to? The people we spend time with are either gonna make us better, they're gonna make us worse, or they're gonna keep us exactly who we are, which is either a good thing or a very bad thing. Is this in my control? Epictetus says this is the key question. This is the chief task of the philosopher in life, which is separating the things that are up to us from the things that are not up to us. And so much of the time and energy we spend in this life are on things that are not up to us, that are not in our control. It just started raining. I don't need to have an opinion on the fact that it's raining because it's not in my control. But what is in my control is what I'm going to do, right? What's in our control is our actions, our thoughts, our opinions, right? And so the Stoic learns to tune out what's not in our control and it focuses on what is in our control. And so we ask ourselves about everything we experience, everything we're feeling, everything we're working on, is this up to me or am I throwing good energy after bad? Am I beating myself against a wall that's never gonna move? What does your ideal day look like? A life, Seneca says, is made up of days. Annie Dillard said, how we spend our lives is of course how we spend our days, right? What does an ideal day look like for you? How are you trying to design your life? If you don't know what a good day is like, what your ideal is, then you're just gonna be working on making more money, acquiring more fame, getting more power or influence. But you have to ask yourself, is this getting me closer or further away from the life that I want? I've talked about how I know exactly what my ideal day looks like. It's a Saturday where I wake up early, I work out, I do a little bit of writing, I spend lots of time with my family, I have time to think, I haven't signed myself up for a bunch of pointless obligations or phone calls or meetings, I spend time outdoors, I'm connected, I'm present. And so I have to look at each opportunity then that comes along any day and ask myself, is it getting me closer or further away from the kind of life I wanna lead and the kind of person that I wanna be? To be or to do, this is a key question. It comes to us from the great strategist, John Boyd, who as he mentored young men and women in the Pentagon, would see that you kind of can go down two paths in life. There's the person who wants to look important, that wants to achieve a high rank, that wants to be in the newspapers or on TV. And then there's the person who wants to quietly get things done. You know, I think it was Truman who said, it's amazing how much you can accomplish if you don't care about who gets the credit. To be or to do is, is largely about credit. Do you care about accomplishments or do you care about impact? Do you care about credit or do you care about getting things done? You have to ask yourself, am I trying to be an important person? Or am I trying to accomplish important things? And this question is critical. To be or to do, how are you measuring your life? Hillel said, if I am not for me, who is? And then he said, if I am only for me, who am I? This, I think, is related to the idea of to be or to do. What's motivating you? Is it external accomplishments or is it making a difference in this world? Yes, you have to fight for yourself. You have to stand up for yourself. You get walked all over. But if all you care about is protecting yourself, if all you care about is attention, who are you? 
I think about someone like George Marshall who accomplishes so much and perhaps his greatest accomplishment is turning down the command at Normandy. He didn't want his personal feelings to be taken into account. Again, to be or to do, but also who am I for and who am I? Yes, he fought really hard to get where he was, to, to make a difference, but then he also knew that ego didn't matter in the end. What mattered is the team effort. There's a great expression I heard that says, if you play for the name on the front of the jersey, they'll remember the name on the back. What am I missing by choosing to worry or be afraid? One of my favorite books is The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. And he says, when you worry, ask yourself, what am I choosing not to see right now? Right, we only have so much in the way of cognitive resources or time or emotional uh, energy. How are you gonna spend it? And then often by being anxious, by being worried, by taking things personally, by being afraid, we're taking our eye off the ball. And so I want you to see those emotions not just as unpleasant, but actively destructive because they are. Stuff's gonna happen in life that makes us emotional, but we have to realize that we're only compounding that by acting on those emotions. Are you doing your job? This is a key question. Um, when Sean Payton was uh, suspended from the NFL for, for a year, he put up a, a big picture of himself in the Saints facility and three words, he said, do your job. This is a thing, I think it comes from Bill Belichick. But the idea is that everyone has a job in every moment. Sometimes that's a little job, sometimes it's a big job. But everyone has to know their job in an organization in life. You gotta ask yourself, are you doing it? I think in the end we end up focusing on everyone else's job than our own because it's easier than doing our own. And that's why I like this question so much. Are you doing your job? And if you aren't, why not? And if you are, good, keep doing it. What is the most important thing to you? What do you actually value? If you don't know what's important, how do you know that you're putting it first? And so to me, all the other questions of life come after you have asked and answered what the most important thing to you is in life. If you told me I could sell 10 times as many books, but it'd come at the expense of my marriage or my relationship with my kids, I'd say, screw that, right? Because I know the most important thing to me is how those things are in balance with each other. Yes, my work is important, but it's not the most important thing. You know, Seneca talks about this idea of euthymia, he says, knowing the path that you're on and not being distracted by the paths of the people who's crisscross yours. He says, especially the people who are hopelessly lost. When you know what's important, when you know what you value, when you know where you're going, it makes it easy for you to ignore what doesn't matter and focus on what does matter. Who is this for? This is a question as a creator you always have to know. Who are you making this for? I talk to so many entrepreneurs, business people, creatives who have no idea. They're just making stuff. They just hope it will find an audience. They go, oh, this is a book for smart people. You have to know who you're making this for. You have to know your audience. You have to know the market. You have to know human beings. This is why empathy is so important. Who are you making this for? Who are they? Where, where are they? What do they want? You have to know who this is for. So I always ask myself, they're making a video or putting out a tweet or, or writing a book. Screw your hunches. Who is this for? Who are they? Does this actually matter? Right? So many of the things we're upset about that we hold on to, that we focus on, they don't matter. Not to you, to anyone at all. They don't, they just don't matter. Marcus Aurelius says, ask yourself in every moment, is this essential? This is because most of what we do and say is not essential. He says, when you eliminate the inessential, you get the double benefit of doing the essential things better. Stephen Colbert loses his father and, and several siblings in a plane crash as a young man. And he said what he took out of this was a question from his mother. She said, can you look at this in the light of eternity? Does this matter in the big picture, right? Because so many of the things we trivially get upset about that we focus on in moments of crisis, we get real clarity about it and we realize they didn't matter at all. People matter, your loved one, matter. Doing your best matters. Everything else is irrelevant. And yet that's where we focus so much of our time and energy. Will this be a live time or dead time? That's something Robert Greene asked me when I was thinking about becoming a writer. I had like a year to kill. 
before I could go do it. And he said, what's this year gonna be for you? Is it gonna be alive time or dead time for you? Are you gonna use every second or are you gonna sit around and be passive and wait? That came flooding back to me in the pandemic when we went into lockdown. Is this gonna be a lifetime or dead time? What am I gonna to have to show for this? Whether it's two weeks or two months or two years, what am I gonna to have to show for this period? A lifetime, treat every moment like a lifetime because while you have it, you're alive. But after it's gone, it's dead, right? Now is now, can you use this time? What can you use it for? If you always choose a lifetime, then you're always getting better and you're always moving forward. You're not wasting time. Seneca says, it's not that life is short, it's that we waste a lot of it. We kill time as time is killing us. And the truth is, you always have the ability to make the most of this moment. So often we choose not to because we, we, we don't ask ourselves this question. Is this who I wanna be? Is this representative of the person that I see myself as, that I am trying to become? Or am I giving into my lower self here? Am I taking a shortcut here? Am I doing something that the person that I see myself as wouldn't do? Cheryl Strait says, you know, you're becoming who you're going to be, so you might as well not be an asshole. When you do things, you have to ask yourself, is this representative of my character, of my priorities, of my values, of what I said is important to me? If the answer is no, you have to not do it. How we do anything is how we do everything. So you have to ask yourself this question, is this who I wanna be? Every interaction, every situation, big or small, because it adds up in the way that nothing else can. If I could give you one more question, a last question, a bonus question, if you will, it comes to us from Viktor Frankl, who survives the Holocaust. He writes the amazing book, Man's Search for Meaning. You know, he says, we ask, what is the meaning of life? But he says, actually, it is life that is asking us that question, and it's our actions, it's our decisions, that provide the answer. Meaning is something we create from our actions, from our decisions, from our choices, from who we choose to be. These are the kinds of questions that if you ask often enough, you will provide, as Viktor Frankl says, the kinds of answers that make you who you're capable of becoming. If you wanna learn more about Stoic philosophy, totally for free, you can sign up for our daily Stoic email. It's one free email every morning, the best of Stoic wisdom, dailystoic.com slash email.